Hello, welcome to Business Math Chapter 6, Cash Purchases. This is for Lesson 6.4, Comparison Shopping. As always, I say in every single one of these videos, make sure you are reading this chapter. Look through the section, pay attention to the vocabulary and the new concepts. Look through the examples they give you. Do not just jump straight into these worksheets. You need to understand the idea behind what you're doing, not just be able to get it done. That way you can apply it a little bit more um, in depth later in the chapter. Because as we get toward the end of the chapter, a lot of the time they ask us to kind of do more of a culminating type activity where we're going to use multiple pieces all at once. So you have to understand the pieces in order to complete um, the kind of end of the section or once we get toward the end of the section. So make sure you're reading that lesson and paying attention to what you're doing. All right. Started right there. Okay. So let's go ahead and read this summary here. You compare the unit price prices of products so you can decide which size is better. If price is the only factor to consider, then the package with the lowest unit price is the best buy. Some stores have a shelf tag that shows the unit price in cents. Um, the dollar amount is changed to cents by multiplying it by 100. Um, and a lot of stores do this where they'll give you the price and then if you look at the tag kind of closely, you'll see the unit price, price per unit. Um, and they, they do that on purpose so that it's kind of easy for you to break it down. Um, not all items have this, but a lot of items do um, have this in the stores. Um, so they don't explain to us necessarily how to complete this. All they say is that the, the dollar amount can be changed to cents by multiplying it by hundreds. So they don't necessarily give us a formula on this one. Um, so again, if you have not looked through the, the examples, you may not quite know what to do here. Um, so uh, Lorenza, I think is how you say your name, Brunel, wants to purchase detergent. What is the unit price for, we have A, a 100 ounce bottle that costs $2.97 or a 200 ounce bottle that costs $5.78, which is the best buy. So we're going kind of back to lesson 6.3 where we learned how to calculate unit price. So if you haven't watched that one or you haven't completed that worksheet, definitely go back, read that section, complete that worksheet, watch the video, um, and then come back here because that'll help you understand exactly what it is I'm doing. So we have price per unit or measure, quantity, however you would like to say that, that second piece. So in this case, it's 100 ounces, so we're dividing by 100. And that will tell us how much this bottle costs per ounce. And then we have the second one, price per quantity again. This time we have a 200 ounce bottle, so we're going to divide by 200. And that will tell us how much this bottle is per ounce. Once we know how much they are per ounce, we can compare them. So we can look and, and decide how much they are each. Um, or, or kind of which one's the best buy. Sorry, I said that kind of funny. So with this one, we end up with 0 0.030. And we end up with 0 0.029. So a lot of the time they're not going to write it like this because it kind of takes up a little too much room. It's a little bit harder to look at. So that's what this multiplying by 100 piece means. So they'll multiply these by 100 so that they'll say it's 3 cents. Or they'll round this off and say um, 2.9 cents. Oh, they didn't round it off. Sorry, just 2.9 cents. I don't know why I say round it off. So a little bit easier to look at if I say this is 3 cents per ounce, this is 2.9 cents per ounce. Um, they're pretty much the same price there because um, this is going to round up basically to about three cents per ounce. It's a tiny bit of savings though. So, if, you know, over time you would save a bit more. Um, so it's, you know, it's definitely a little bit better buy, only a little. So then you just say, you know, which one's the better buy? Okay, well, 2.9 is just slightly better. So it's the 200 ounce bottle. Right, so that's all you're doing on section four. We're just comparing. We need to bring them down to the unit price so that we can compare. Because if we have two different items of two different sizes, so 100 ounce, 200 ounce, you know, whatever the size is, and then two different prices, that's pretty hard to compare unless we know the unit price 
once you know the unit price, then they're super easy to compare and, and decide, okay, this is the better buy as far as price goes. Um, doesn't mean it's the better product, just means it's the better price. Uh, so same exact idea number two, you're just gonna divide these down so that they are unit prices, they give you the cost, they give you the unit, um, and they want you to do each one of these, they don't give you a line for them, but you're going to need to go through and calculate because they want to know which one is the better buy. Um, I know on my worksheet they actually did give lines for each one of these. So hopefully they did that on the student version too. Because um, on the teacher version there is a line for each one of these since they are technically, they're, they're questions there. It's not just the one question at the end. All right. Let's see. Number three, exact same idea. Um, you're just going to calculate the unit price for each each piece here, each bag of potato chips, and then which one is the better buy. Uh, you are shopping for soda in the food town market. Sorry, let me scooch down here so that you can actually see what I'm looking at here. I was looking at number four. So this one's just a little bit more of a word problem. So um, soda is priced as three 12-pack 12-ounce cans for $9 or three six-pack 12-ounce plastic bottles for nine dollars which is the best buy so in this case we need to make sure we're paying attention it says three whoops it's a very ugly three here what's going on there we go three and it's um three 12 pack so i need to make sure i pay attention to the idea there there's three 12 packs so that's three times 12, so that's 36. Um, and then I also have their 12 pack, 12 ounce cans. So I'm gonna have to multiply that by 12 to figure out how many total ounces there are there, okay? So I end up with um, 432 ounces, because I need to kind of get a total there in order to do a unit price per ounce. Um, since they're different size, Containers, I can't simply do containers. I can't say, well, the cans cost this much and the bottles cost this much. Well, there's a different amount in, in the cans and the bottles. So that's why I want to bring it all the way down to ounces. Um, so I have my ounces. Now I just need to do price per ounce. And then I'll have my cost for this pack. Same thing here. I have a six pack. Oops, sorry, I wrote that wrong. Three six pack so that's 18 bottles and each bottle is 24 ounces so i have a total of 432 ounces so i actually get the exact same amount sorry I, i've been told my twos and my z's look a lot alike so two z <laughs> um so they're both the same right so i'm going to do the exact same thing here which should get me the same answer i just did in this box, right? So um, we should already hopefully know the answer for part three, um, which one is the better buy. Um, since it looks like we're gonna end up with the same answer, would it really matter which one we purchased or are they kind of the same there? So um, we just have to pay attention to that idea. All right, we're gonna look at the second page for lesson four here, let me scooch up. Um, all right, so we have two, very um, similar problems to what we've just done. We're going to um, have the unit price here. Um, and make sure you're paying attention. They're also throwing in a little bit extra here of the, the special price is buy two, get one free. So you have to take that into account on the quantity. Because um, the a store has a special price on hanger hanging folders sold 25 to a box. The regular price is $7.49 per box. The special price is buy two, get one free. So first you want to do what is the unit price? So the normal price per how many they normally have. And that will tell you the, the, the unit price of one box. But if you buy two and you get one free, now you have to do $749 times two because you bought two. And divide that, so I'm going to do my division symbol here, divide by 25 times 3. I bought two, I got one free, so I get 
I bought two 25s, 25 and 25, but I have another 25 knitting for free. So you have to pay attention to that one on this one. So there's a little bit more to it for the second piece. And which is the better buy? Should I just buy the one and move on? Or should I buy two and get one free? Um, sometimes that's not always the best deal. It's it's one of those sales gimmicks that it sometimes sounds great. You know, buy two, get one free. Or, you know, if you buy this many, you get this price. It depends on the unit price. So that's one of those skills you definitely want to make sure you pay attention to because it's a good one to learn um, for life skills here. Uh, all right. So let's see. You are purchasing cotton swabs that come in two different size containers. One box contains 300 swabs for $299. Sorry, $2.99. That would be very expensive cotton swabs. And the other box is specially marked at 30% more swabs for the same price. How much will you save per swab by buying the larger box? So we know that the larger box is a good buy. It's gonna, if, it, if I get 30% more for the exact same price, obviously the, the bigger box is a better buy. I'm just gonna get more and I don't have to pay anymore. Um, so that's definitely kind of easy to compare there, but that's not what they're asking. This time they wanna know how much is it per swab, how much do you save? So first we need to know how much is it per swab to begin with. So we need to do a unit price for the, um, the small box. And then we need to do a unit price for the bigger box. So we need to take this 300 and you can do it a couple of ways. You can do times 30% and then add that back to 300. Or if you remember from other lessons, you can just do one point three. And what that means is 130%. So 100% of the 300 and then another 30% on top of that. So it's a quick way to not have to do that adding back. Um, if that's a little confusing, um, I would definitely go with the option of do 300 times 30% and then add that amount back to 300. So this will tell you how many swabs are in the bigger box. And then we're gonna take our price and divide by this piece here. And that'll tell us again, our price per unit. Um, we have two different prices per unit now. All we have to do is subtract. We just have to figure out what's, how much do we actually save per um, cotton swab here. So we would just take our two amounts that I haven't calculated for yet, but I'm definitely confident we can calculate that one on our own and you're gonna subtract. It's gonna be a very, very tiny number. Um, so again, if you remember back from, I believe it was, it was this section, sorry, okay. So um, on, on problem number one, when we did this one, and we multiplied by 100 so that we had something like this, that's the same idea they do here in the um, kind of answer key area for the teachers. Um, they also leave it as a decimal, so it, it has both options. Um, generally, we're probably not going to look at it as that longer decimal. We're going to look at it as the cents option. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at this algebra version here. So Food Pantry sells its private label salad dressing in a 48-ounce bottle and a 32-ounce bottle. If the 48-ounce bottle is 88 cents more than the 32-ounce bottle, and the unit price of the 32-ounce bottle is uh, or one penny, more than the unit price of the 48 cent ounce bottle, find the cost of each. So, woof, <laughs> that was a lot of kind of um, complicated information, I think. So first, we need to start identifying some variables. What do we not know? So we don't know the cost of our 32 ounce bottle. We don't know the cost of our 48 cent bottle, 48 ounce bottle, sorry. So we just need to, to do some variables here. So let's go X equals our 32 ounce bottle cost. All right, so there's our cost. Um, instead of having to say that each time, we can just say X. X now represents the cost of the 32 ounce bottle. Um, and we also know that um, the 48 ounce bottle is 88 cents more than the 32 ounce bottle. So we can just go 88 or X plus 88 cents. And that's going to equal our 48 ounce bottle. 
um, cost, sorry, I'll put cost on there. All right, so now we have our two pieces that we needed in order to start writing an equation for these. So it's definitely a little bit of a, almost kind of a riddle in here to break this down a little bit. So, so far we've used um, the this line here. So we are gonna have to kind of come back to some of these other ones in just a moment. Um, so first, we need to start setting up basically a price per unit. Um, and it's gonna be an equation um, where we wanna set them equal to each other. So first, we want we want to know price per unit for the 32 ounce bottle. So we'd have price per unit, right? So same kind of idea we've been doing on these other ones. We just don't know what the price is. We're trying to figure that out. Um, and we're gonna set that equal to the price per unit for the 48 ounce bottle. So we're gonna have x plus 0.88 over 48. So price. Remember, this is the price of the 48. Um, ounce bottle divided by 48 that brings our unit cost but now we have to add a penny to it because that's what they told us it's the unit price is one penny more um, than the, the unit price here so the 32 ounce bottle is one penny more so we have to add a penny to it on this side in order to make it equal the other side so again a little bit of a, a tricky riddle kind of a problem that they're doing here um, so now that we have this set up, we can start um, basically multiplying. So, okay, that's, let's keep moving. I'm going to scooch down here. Um, so in order to get rid of these fractions, what we want to do is multiply on both sides by 48 and 32 on both sides here. So the reason I'm doing that is to get rid of these pieces. So if I multiply this side by 32, the 32's cancel because 32 divided by 32 cancels. So I end up with just 48x on this left side. And on this side, remember I'm multiplying both. So it cancels here, but it doesn't cancel completely because remember this is also 48 times 32. So I, I'm multiplying this fraction and the penny over here. Um, so it cancels on this side and we have times 32. So we end up with 32x plus 0 0.88. And I just didn't distribute it yet so that you can see I'm just putting it in front here. I know it's on the bottom of the fraction there. I put it underneath. Doesn't mean it's actually in the bottom. I'm multiplying by those amounts. So just kind of, I probably should have stuck it up here to make that a little clearer. Um, and then we're going to multiply one penny times this amount also. So um, looks a little bit longer here. In just a second, we're going to kind of reduce this pretty quickly, and it's going to look a little less crazy. So 48x equals, now we're going to distribute. So we have 32x, 32 times x is 32x. 32 times, let's see, 32 times 88 cents we get plus 28, 16, because 32 times 88 again, 28, 16. Um, now that I've distributed, I don't have to put the parentheses back. I can just keep those dropped down. So I'm going to multiply inside of here before multiplying here. It really actually doesn't matter. You can just multiply, 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 multiply from left to right. The parentheses don't really mean anything because it's all multiplication here. So I can go, um, ooh, I forgot my zero. Should be zero, one. Sorry, because it's one penny. Um, so 0 0.01 times 48 times 32, and I end up with 1536. All right, so hopefully this is already starting to look a little less crazy um, than the, the original problem up here, because we can start to combine some like terms here. So we have 48x equals 32x, and we're simply going to add these two together. So 1536 plus 2816, I think it forgot the 20 there. There we go, um, 4352. All right, so now we're getting down here where we only have a couple steps left. Um, we need to, oh, come on, move up. Need a little bit more room here. Um, 
So we want to get these x's on the same side. They're on opposite sides of the equal sign there. One's on the left, one's on the right. So I want to move the 32. I don't want to move the 48. It's already by itself on the left side. I want to bring this 32 over to the 48. So it's positive 32. I'm going to subtract it from both sides. And that's going to give me, um, let's see, what is that? Let me make sure. Don't mess up my math here. Simple math and mess it up on the, the video here. These two are going to cancel out because we have 32 minus 32. And even though they have x's, they're being multiplied by the same number. So that means you'd get the same number if you knew what x was. So they're still the same number, even with the x's included. They just cancel out. And we bring 43, 52 down. Last step here, we have 16 times x. So we divide. 16 divided by 16 cancels. X equals, and let's see, we have 43, 52 divided by 16. Looks like I've got the hiccups now. So we have 272. So this is the price of the 32 ounce bottle. Remember, they want the cost of both 32 and 48. This is just the 32 ounce. We need the 48 ounce. So, and if we remember, we come back up here, we just have to add 88 cents to it. So I can go um, 277, or sorry, 272 plus 0.88, because remember that's up here, it's 88 cents more. So my price is 360 for my 48 ounce bottle. So make sure you do both because that, that's a big one, you know, for getting to kind of complete the problem there. Alrighty, uh, I hope that helped and I will see you in section five.